Hi there, my name is Chris Harrison, I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on titration calculations and diprotic acid curves. So in this video we're going to look at a standard titration calculation, which is the type of things you would see at AS level, but this time we're going to show you how it might link with uh, some of the concepts at A2 chemistry, including pH curves uh, and Ka calculations as well. Uh, and we're also going to look at one particular special type of a titration curve, which are diprotic acid curves, and they give this funny shape. And we're going to look at that and why it gives this distinct shape. So for this, you do need to know what a standard uh, titration curve looks like. And I have done a video that looks into the four different combinations of titration curve and explain why they form that shape as well. So uh, if you'd like to look at that video, um, then if you just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video there. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at this type of curve here. This is a diprotic acid curve. Diprotic means an acid that will give up two protons per uh, one mole of molecule. So for example, you see we've got sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid has two protons attached to it and it can dissociate both of them. Now when we uh, react that with sodium hydroxide, we get this classic diprotic curve. Now you can see here that in our conical flask, we have an acid in the conical flask. In this case, it's sulfuric acid because we're starting at a pH of about one. Uh, and then we're adding sodium hydroxide to it. So you can see here that we've got this double kind of rise here. We've got one small rise going from the uh, about a pH of one or a half to, uh, to about pH five, and then it flattens out, and then we've got a really steep rise going up to pH 14, which is obviously the pH of a strong base, which in this case is sodium hydroxide. So what's actually going on here? Why do we have two rises with this curve? Well, let me explain. The diprotic acid is actually giving up two protons, and it gives them up in stages. So the first stage, we're going to write an equation showing exactly what's happening with this reaction. So the first one, we'll do this in blue, I think, is the sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, uh, is going to react with hydroxide ions. Um, the sodium bit we've just missed out with the spectator ion. So the hydroxide ions react with the sulfuric acid. Uh, and what actually forms, this is an equilibrium, uh, is HSO4 minus plus water. So actually what happens is the sulfuric acid only picks up, only gives up, sorry, one proton to form HSO4 minus ion. So this is this small increase here. So we have partially neutralized some of the H plus ions in the solution, but not all of them because we still have a sulfuric acid or this HSO4 minus ion still able to give up another proton. So that's why it flattens out and then it rises up again. And so the second equation for this step here is going to be HSO4 minus. Again, we're going to react that with OH minus, and that's an equilibrium. And we're going to produce SO42 minus plus H2O. So you can see in this reaction, that what we've done is we've taken the HSO4 minus ion, that's reacted with more hydroxide ions and has formed the uh, sulfate ion, SO42 minus, plus water. So you can see this is actually done in two stages. So make sure that if they give you a diprotic acid curve and they get you to write equations showing what's happening at each end point, these are the type of equations that you uh, need to write here as well. Uh, you could also get, this doesn't just apply to H2SO4, you can do it to weak acids as well. So for example, you can have dicarboxylic acids. Um, and it could also work for um, dibasic compounds as well, ones that are soluble. Uh, so ones with two OH minuses in. So it works in a very similar way. So just be prepared to explain why we have this kind of double end point here um, and this um, this unique kind of shape here for diprotic acid curves. Okay, so what I'd like to do finally is just quickly look at this uh, titration calculation. Uh, this is just a standard titration calculation, so we'll quickly run through it um, to make sure that you know how to run it. But also at the end, I'm going to show you how it could link with other things as well in A2. So you can see here we've got 25 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid, which is the same acid over there, is needed to neutralise 35.65 centimetres cubed of 0.1 moles per dm cubed sodium hydroxide. And what they want you to do is to calculate the concentration of the sulfuric acid that has been used. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do really is we need to work out the moles, always in titrations. So we're going to set this out properly. We're going to write the equation for it first. That's the first thing you should always do. Uh, in these calculations. So we're going to do this in blue, I think. So you can see the reaction here is we've got sulfuric acid, H2SO4, 
uh, and this is reacting with sodium hydroxide. There you go. Uh, and this uh, is an equilibrium reaction. Uh, and this is going to form sodium sulfate plus, uh, and we're also going to form water as well. All right, so this is the same reaction that we had over here, this is our titration curve. Uh, obviously, we need to balance this. Um, so we need, you can see we've got two sodiums there, so we need a two in front of there to make sure that balances. And also we need two in front of the water as well to make sure our hydrogen is balanced. So you can see here's our balanced equation. Now all we have to do is work out the concentration. And like I say, we need to work out the moles. One of the neat ways which I like to do it is by writing um, just some acronyms or some letters along the side. So we're going to work out the volume, we're going to work out the concentration, and we're going to work out the number of moles, which is along there. Now, um, we know the volume of both of these, sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. So we're going to write these in here. So the volume of sulfuric acid is 25 centimeters cubed. Now, we need to convert that into decimeters cubed. One of the ways to do that is divide them by 1,000. Um, or what I can do is I can just put times 10 to the minus 3, which makes it a little bit quicker. And that's what I'm going to do there. If you're not sure on how to convert units uh, in these type of calculations, I have done a very quick video looking into the conversion of units. Just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video there. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put times by 10 to the minus 3 on the end, because that means divide by 1,000. Uh, the volume of sodium hydroxide is 35.65, so I'm going to put that on there. 35.65, again, this is times by 10 to the minus 3. We need to convert that into decimeters cubed. Um, the concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0.1, we know that there. Okay, uh, we don't know the concentration of sulfuric acid, because that's what we have to work out. All right, so like I say, in titrations, work out the moles. We can work out the moles here. Uh, and we can do that by using our simple mole calculation. So remember, the mole calculation uh, is the number of moles equals the concentration uh, times by the volume. So the volume must be in decimeters cubed. There you go. Um, so that's really, really important, must be in decimeters cubed. Uh, so you can see here, we can work out the number of moles here by taking the concentration, times it by the volume. The volume uh, is in decimeters cubed already, because we've put it in there. Now, if we put that into our calculator, uh, we should get a value of 3.57 times by 10 to the minus 3. Okay, that tells us the number of moles. Now, you can see here, because this is diprotic, this acid here. We need two molecules of sodium hydroxide to neutralize one molecule of sulfuric acid because it gives up two, two protons. So you need double the amount. Um, now, this is obviously, this is the reason why, but also we need to work out the number of moles uh, of sulfuric acid in order to work out the concentration. Now, because of this ratio, this is two moles, this is one mole, so we half that to get the uh, number of moles of um, uh, sulfuric acid. And that's going to be 1.79 times by 10 to the minus 3. You go and that's the number of moles there and then from that we need to work out the concentration so again if we rearrange this equation here the concentration which is this bit here uh, the concentration is the number of moles divided by the volume again that must be in decimeters cubed just make sure that you're converting your units carefully uh, and again if we put that into our calculator uh, we should work out the concentration of this um, to be 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.0716. And this is moles per decimeters cubed. So we took the moles that we had here, 25, uh, sorry, 1.79 times 10 to the minus 3, divided it by that volume, and we should get this as our concentration. Now you might say, okay, that's at AS level, but we can link this at A2 as well. Um, the concentration can be used. Remember, this is the concentration of sulfuric acid. Uh, we can use that to work out the pH um, of um, your acid here by using the pH equation. Uh, we can also use it to work out the value of Ka as well. Um, um, so, well, with this one, you couldn't because this one's actually a weak, uh, strong acid. Uh, but you could use it to work out the pH. But if it was a weak acid, you could use it to uh, work out Ka 
uh, in that instance as well. So actually from this step, although this calculation is very similar, uh, there are ways in which you can use this number uh, at A2 or level or year two uh, chemistry. And I have done videos that look into uh, calculating pH and calculating Ka, etc. Uh, that's on the same playlist as, um, as this video is found, which is on the acids, bases, buffers playlist. So uh, if you want to have a look at them videos, you're more than welcome to. And it shows you how we can use this to link it with other things and get all their marks. Um, but um, there we go. That's the video for titration calculations and diprotic acid curves. That's it. Bye-bye.